Some say that alongside this see-it-to-believe-it world is the shadowy realm of the supernatural. Sometimes the residents of that dimension touch us, and in one moment, our lives are changed forever. America's Lady of Supernatural Thrillers, Mary Ann Pohl, is your real ghost chatter host. On this podcast, you'll hear stories by real people who have seen real ghosts. Gordon tells us about an unwelcome encounter with his dead father-in-law. And Lori tells us about a dead logger who looked for his wife and daughter for years after his death until she helped him find peace. Then there's Victoria, who shares her story of a long-dead pig, Edna June, who still watches over her ranch. Did you know a cafe in Anchorage, Alaska is haunted by the ghost of a woman who was blown to bits by a hired hitman? Once in a while, Mary Ann will podcast a tale taken from the genre she loves best, the supernatural. These are just a few of the stories you will hear, and these stories just keep coming. Welcome to today's Real Ghost Chatter episode. Have you heard about Anchor? If you haven't, I'm here to tell you it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free, and I mean free. I haven't paid a dime to produce or distribute my podcasts. There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. How easy is that? Podcast distribution can be a headache, but not with Anchor. Anchor distributes your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and many, many more. As a bonus and not an obligation, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor has everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to Real Ghost Chatter. I'm Mary Ann Paul, America's Lady of Supernatural Thrillers. Today I'm welcoming Rosella Ciro back for a second time. As you know, she is a ghost hunter of the Tri-City Group in Ohio and paranormal thriller author of 2095, based off a true story. Rosella lives in Ohio and is the writer of the well-known blog, My Haunted Travel Blog. At the end of the program, I will give you the URL for that so you can go check her out. Rosella has years of ghost hunting investigation experience in the paranormal field, traveling around the U.S. to the most haunted historic locations and writing about them in her blog. She prides herself on telling the real story and truth regarding her experiences with spirits encountered at historic locations, as well as the legends that surround the entity. Hello, Rosella, and welcome back. Hi. Thank you for having me back. I know that today we have a special one that we couldn't cover in our last episode. I don't know how you want to begin this, but I I hate to give any spoilers, but I'm going to say this is your encounter with an angel. Is that correct? Yes. I'm going to let you be talk and I'll ask questions if I have any. Okay. Well, basically I was on, it was Valentine's Day and I was on my way to Branson, Missouri with my family on a sporadic trip that we had uh, kind of just discovered, hey, the kids have four days off from school. So we have this long weekend, it's February, let's get out of here. And I had this drawing to um, Branson, Missouri because of the Titanic Museum. And I wanted to go and talk to the staff, interview them and see what I could experience there and write about it for my blog. Uh, Not intending to go um, anywhere else. On the way there, my husband discovered that we were, like he said, oh, we're just a few minutes away from um, Arkansas, the border. And I was like, no way. And on my bucket list was the Crescent Hotel in Arkansas. And I was like, just for kicks, just look it up and see how far away we are. And he said, we're an hour and 15 minutes away. And I was like, that's it, I'm going. And he looked it up, which he never does. And he said, like, um, they they do ghost tours. Uh, And I had found it on the Travel Channel, and I just really had, like, kind of fallen in love with it. Felt like some kind of calling to it that I had to experience this. 
and it had a lot of activity. He was he, he was really great that he let me kind of just drop him off um, at the hotel with the kids and they went swimming Why I drove an hour and 15 minutes literally through boondock mountains and it was <laughs> scary. Like I thought, I'm like, okay, so this will be the time that I discover the book Bigfoot's Real because he's going to jump in front of my car. <laughs> I'm going to like roll down the mountain and no one's finding me. <laughs> and the good thing is I had a big sport ute, so I'm like, okay, all right, just got to be like steady, okay, I'll be fine. And I'm driving, uh, like I was, you know, not really driving very fast, but people were flying by me going like probably 70 miles an hour and I was probably going 60 at, at my press because it was terrifying. These hills were huge mountains. Uh -huh. it, it was like a deserty kind of forest. It was a weird mix. Um, so, and then it gets dark and I'm like looking for this direction up to this place. And it was, it was, still don't even know how I even got up there. Cause it was like these weird turn and then like jerk your car, like basically down this kind of like little hill thing and then start going up again in these turns. And all of a sudden you come up in this gorgeous, like, you know, building, this hotel is there. It's all, I think it's all limestone, I'm pretty positive. And I did write an article on the man who was in charge of the ghost tours, Keith Scales. He wrote a book basically about the whole history and he did cover that. So I'm positive it's limestone, but it's, it's just immaculate. It's the most gorgeous. It looks like a castle, like mm. a mansion wow. and a castle at the same time. Oh, wow. and beautiful. You just feel it. Like, even though it was dark, I was like, this place, it just looks so kind of like gothy, dark with these lights everywhere. And I got out of the car and I'm like, oh my God, so excited. Kid in a candy store. And <laughs> I go in and I'm like, oh my God, it's so cool. It's so cool. And immediately the funny thing is I saw Keith's book I'm sitting there. There was like probably 20 books. I never looked at the other ones. I just looked at his. And I'm like, I'm going to buy this when I'm on my way out. And I asked him what, you know, where the ghost tour was and looking around. And it was on the like uh, the last floor, I think it was like the fourth or fifth floor. Took the elevator up, go up there, and I didn't know there was another tour before my tour. So online, the only tour that showed up, which because the other ones were uh, probably full, I was put into this nine o'clock slot and I'm like, I got an hour and a half drive home. This is probably going to be more than an hour for this tour because the place is huge. Mm -hmm. So I convinced the lady, I told her what I was doing and I'm like, look, I just drove 10 hours to be here on basically a whim. Can I uh, go on this tour early? And she was like, oh yeah, yeah, you can. This is so cool, we have a writer here. She brought me in, introduced me to the tour guide and I was really, I was just so giddy. He looked at me too and he's, he started, when he was talking, he was talking directly at me like no one else is in the room. So I could take my notes, it was awesome. The whole time sitting there, I was drawn to this couple that was sitting like pretty much a chair, like in between, I mean, away from me. And she, her name was Ashley and she just kept smiling at me. And it was like, we always knew each other. And I don't know why, because you're a total stranger. I mean, I'm from Ohio and I'm in Arkansas. So <laughs> no way I know you, right? I just had like the blog, literally, I think I only had one up and I didn't have anything else. Uh, you know, up yet. She didn't know who I was. I, was. I just was talking to the crowd when he was addressing me. And then we started going around and I got out my gadgets and I'm like, nobody else is going to do this. This is going to take some guts for me to get out my gadgets in front of these people, but I'm doing it because I drove all this way. Got out my EMF reader and it automatically starts going like off at these points that he indicated that it would. And he's talking and her and her husband are behind me. So we're going, we start making our way down the stairs, like this huge stair, stairway and go down a few floors. And all of a sudden I just started talking to her and it's like she was angelic and mm. I can't describe it, but the word to describe her was definitely angelic. I, I know it was, she just, I got very comfortable and peaceful around her. Like I could tell her anything. She was really into, um, the paranormal and all the shows and everything. It was her birthday the next day. And her husband didn't like this stuff, but he went to go because she gets to do something like this on her birthday all the time every year. And she had dragged him, he says, but he, they were just such a funny, loving couple. And I started kind of quickly just telling them what I do and what I started and where I was going the next day, which was the Titanic Museum. And she was taking pictures all night, like pictures, video and doing it. She had her stuff too. And we just got along so well. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, at one point, the EMF readers started going like insanely crazy when we went down to the basement. Uh, but we soon found out that it was the electric stuff that uh, was setting it off. Makes but sense. It was, in the very end, though, like when where there was no electric, we went into this. It was like kind of they called it like kind of like the body freezer, really. But we, there was no freezer. It was just a room mm-hmm. where they used to put the bodies, kind of hiding them, really, so nobody would discover that people were dying. Because mm-hmm. um, it used to be an old hospital, really. Like, a, it was a cancer hospital where a guy who was li- literally a fraud was claiming he could cure cancer in the 18, in the 18 or 1900s. He was just stealing their money and, like, letting them die. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. It was a horrible situation. That but is horrible. They put us in there, and the guy was like, his name was David, who was giving the tour. And he's like, some people say that they get touched or get pictures in here and stuff. So we're in there and her husband, who's a non-believer, apparently gets grabbed. I mean, he got, he, he freaked out. He just jumped a mile and he goes, Ashley, stop touching my leg. <laughs> You're caressing my leg. And she goes, I'm over here by Meg. And we turn our cell phone lights on and, and we're sitting, we're standing right next to each other. And he's on the far wall alone. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, ah, get me out of here. <laughs> so, it was so funny. We were just laughing. We're like, the non-believer is the always the one that gets touched. So, it was hysterical. We came out, and David's like, "What happened? <laughs> Are you okay?" And I'm like, "It's not me that's grand, it's him." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "That's fine." But yeah, he was he was so funny. And then afterwards, um, I interviewed actually both of them and David, and got their names to put it on my blog. And then we, she just, I started text. I texted her my information right away. Like I didn't want her to leave without being able to get her phone number to text or something, you know, get that kind of feet, you know, just so she got my message and then we could talk again. I felt like there was something really meant to be a very strong connection. Even when she left, I did not want her to leave. Oh. It was just like, okay. Oh, yeah. So she left. And then the, that very night I drove home. I, I didn't like, well, drove back to the hotel. I didn't probably leave for another hour and 15 minutes because David took me on a personal quick tour of of the place and even showed me artifacts that were supposed to go into the Titanic, but they were too large and they so they couldn't fit. Mm -hmm. They've been there for a hundred years. Wow. Sitting in the hotel, all these really interesting things. He took me around taking pictures. It was really too weird. Every picture that I took, I had never captured a picture of anything in my pictures before until that day. Every single picture I took was something. Wow. I mean, I got the woman at the end of the hallway. You could clearly see her, like, perfectly in the picture. Otherwise, it's like, kind of a whole skirt. Mm-hmm. Like, slowly in the hand. And then there's a woman in between the hand and the hand in the hand, too. Mm-hmm. So, it was interesting. And then I uh, got a lot of orbs. And then she started texting me when I got back to the hotel all these things that all the pictures that she got she also captured a video of a red orb going um like literally you can see me in the shot this red orb behind my shoulder wow. just going to town i never even saw it mm. um we just were texting all the time i mean even a few hours would go by and you'd be like oh i gotta talk to ashley again i just could not get enough of of talking to her which is really strange because usually i'm so involved with my children and i just don't have time in between multitasking to really talk to people during the day. Right. So making time for her and stopping everything I was doing was a big deal. Well, I literally was getting sick on the way back from Branson, uh, pretty much like two, three days later. My husband looked at me and he goes, you're really, really white. And I had recently been very sick that I literally almost died. Mm. It would be kind of like, typed as like maybe even an organ failure. I had my gallbladder went bad that it caused stones and put them into my other organs and my organs were shutting down. Wow. So to me, that's pretty much organ failure. Yeah. (laughs) So when I tell people organ failure, they're like, oh my God. And yeah, it's pretty, it was pretty bad. And I couldn't eat for like really weeks. And so I was really, really very sick that I almost died. I mean, the doctors literally surrounded me when I went for my checkup and said, you shouldn't be here. Like, it was pretty insane. I'm like, thanks guys, you know, way to scare me more. Um, <laughs> but so my immune system was really shot, it was down. And according to the doctors, it was supposed to be 
like a bad, I would have a bad immune system from just basically yeah, sicknesses, viruses for like a year and a half, or they said three years. Mm. And I was like really scared that I was going to get something, but I didn't think much of it. But my husband turned to me and goes, you're white. You look like this when you were dying pretty much in the hospital. Like he was freaked out. And I didn't feel bad. And I went home and then the next night I was sicker than sick. Now, when I think about it, I think I probably had COVID because they didn't know what it really was back then. Right. And this was like February 16th. Mm-hmm. They had no clue what was going on with COVID. Oh, I was so sick. So it was sick for eight straight days, but the sickest I was were, were for six days. I had texted Ashley though that very night before I went down and I was, we were making all these plans. We were going to see each other and she was going to go with me to all these places and we were going to investigate. She was going to be in charge of the equipment and I was going to do the investigations um, and interview the staff and then write about it. We were going to go to all these places. She's going to come to my birthday, like my birthday party and all this stuff that I had. Mm-hmm. And the last text that I, I was the last one to hear from her. At, um, it was Tuesday night. I was like, I kind of had just like gotten out of the bathtub and I'm like, oh, you know, I'll text Ashley, talk to her about this to kind of give me something to be looking forward to again. Like we both need that and talk about the hotel for a few minutes. She brushed me off like a little bit. It was weird. I could mm-hmm. tell that something was wrong. Like uh-huh. she would have talked to me extensively and she was like, yeah, see you in the morning girl, like night and stuff. And I'm like, what? So that was the night that I went down. So I was sick for six days, the worst kind of sick. And I couldn't look at my phone. I couldn't do anything like no screens, TV. I was just felt like I was dying. And then her mother messaged me through messenger really late. It was like 10 30 or something, 11 o'clock at night. And I was like, okay, I don't really want to talk to anybody, but I had, I had this feeling that I need to look at that. And I hadn't looked at anything for six days. Her mother said that she had a heart attack and died. Oh, really? Oh, she was a baby. Right. And she had she had two grown up kids somehow who had their, who had children. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I I I mean it still devastates me to be honest. And, oh, I bet. But to me, it was like she was my best friend in the world because right. she got loved everything I loved. She she was like a big supporter because people in my family don't really they don't support me very much at all and like in my i mean my not my husband or anything but the other my family members right and i just really needed them i couldn't believe that my friend was now gone and then her sister i found her sister on there on on one of like the posts from ashley's page and i texted her and i said like well messenger and I said, I'm sorry. And she knew exactly who I was. So Ashley had told everybody in her family who I was and the connection that we immediately had mm-hmm. that was so close and so fast. And you know, that's how I describe Ashley. She was just angelic. And I think that she was definitely, I was meant to meet her that night. And look, if I would have gone on the other tour I was scheduled for, I mm-hmm. never would have. Right. And I never would have met David. I never would have, um, like David called Keith and he got me that interview. And the thing is, I have never written that blog yet because if I do, then I have to accept that she's gone. Right. Have you heard from, I mean, have you ever had any contact afterwards with her? Um, with Ashley? Yes. Yes, I actually have recently, actually this last Tuesday, I was doing an investigation at the Victorian Museum house. And it's like my relatives and everybody I love were just lining up. And she was one of them. And she was talking to me and she said that it was meant to be and she's my guardian angel now. Aww. And that's why we met. So, it's like, I kind of always knew. And if I did say, like if, I, if, if I've been having like a hard time or, you know, really frustrated with all of this quarantine stuff, I mean, me and Amy now talk a lot her sister about how crazy it is that all this happened just after her her death Mm -hmm. her sudden death and then this quarantine this virus comes so it was really strange but yeah like during that hard hard times I would be like Ashley you know like just talk to me just give me a sign 
No, you've had a few things that kind of like noises and stuff, but you really never know. But I always feel her presence if I'm if I call out. Mm -hmm. I feel that she is there. It's a, <laughs> Even though it's crazy. <laughs> no, I don't think it's crazy at all. I've had those experiences when someone has passed away. So I don't think it's crazy. I think that, I mean, it's funny that you would have felt like she was an angel on earth. Right. I know. It, yeah. And it's so funny. I can remember still seeing her like it was yesterday. And I picture that moment all the time. Like, why? You know, when I was really, really angry, like, why did I meet this person just to have her taken away from me in six days? Like, what were you thinking, God? And mm -hmm. get so angry and, you know, but I'm a person who lives my life. Every day I say to myself, everything happens for a reason. Sometimes mm -hmm. multiple times a day. Right. And I, <laughs> yeah. Cause you, now we really need it. But you know, like, yeah, when you're a mom and everything, it's like, okay, like just roll with the punches. Everything happens for a reason. This is like something that I'm supposed to learn. And mm -hmm. I'm always telling myself that I'm supposed to learn to grow from this thing. So I'm like, what am I supposed to learn and grow from this? I don't know what I'm supposed to be like just having heartache and pain. And I feel that this person was my best friend though. I only knew them for six days. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had all these plans and we were so excited. I couldn't stop talking to her. So, and to have her family validate that, they knew who I was. And she had like shared all my information off Facebook to all of them. And mm -hmm. all, it was on her page. So it was, it was validation. She, she really cared. Mm -hmm. So to have her taken away like that, oh, it, was, it was devastating. It was just, I don't think I'll ever really be over it. But I believe that that was why, because she was supposed to be somebody who was in my life to get to know me, to be my angel. Oh, that's, that's a wonderful thought. She was, she was a, a beautiful person too. Like, I just wish that I had more time. I, I wish that we would have met earlier, but there's nothing you can really do. I, I'm lucky I had the moment because I almost wouldn't have. If I didn't press my way into that room and do that to get back earlier to my kids, I never would have met her. Right. Exactly. Oh, it's a sad, it's a sad story, but also a good one because you, you got to talk to her. And I know that we're going to do an episode on the Victorian house later. So that we don't want to, I don't want to give any spoilers away on that one. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I do want to talk about that some more when you get, when we get to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This was a wonderful story, a little off from what we usually do on this program, but I love it. The fact that it's just a little different, you know, and also one that, that helps us to understand that sometimes bad things happen for a reason. Yes, right. And I believe all things that are bad can happen for a reason to, to help us learn, even if they hurt and they're awful. You know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah. We right. learn from them. So, you can, I mean, for you to share it and for you to share your story here is really special. I really appreciate that. I really do. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it was sad at my birthday party because my birthday party was um, on leap year, but though my birthday is actually in March. The only day that everybody could get together was that day, which was very, also another happens, uh, thing happens for a reason because literally the day after, the government started shutting down. Right. And, wow. Um, I was like, oh, okay, like, good thing we did this because all my friends were in the older bracket. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> um, but yeah, people were really like, are you okay? Are you all right? I'm like, you know, no, I'm really not. Because now all night I'm thinking she wanted to be here and she, you know, she's not there, but I knew that she probably was, you know, there. Mm -hmm. Her presence felt like it was there mm -hmm. um, to me in my heart, of course, because I, I longed for it. Like I, it was just like a longing. I've been, it's kind of like, I just missed her so much. Right. Yeah, so I think about her every day. Aww. Like, you know, what would actually think about the fact that she, um, you know, tell me about that. And even though I only knew her a short time, I still think about her all the time. And I think it's always going to be that now. Well, it probably will be. I don't... I don't want to go into a big thing on grief here, but you know what I, I understand from grief for me is that grief doesn't go away. It comes and it goes. Right. So, it does seem to kind of be a whip. And, and, and this has been really very, very fast for you. It hasn't even been six months if I, from what I can tell. From right. What you said. So literally it takes at least a year to get even more comfortable with grief. And you know, I live in an area where my dad lived when he was alive. And so every time I drive past the road that would go to his house, I feel sad. 
So I'm, you know, and I've been doing that for six years. So I just don't think grief goes away. I think, I think we learn to live with it. And I think, you know, we let it come. It's like a wave of, from the ocean. We let it come and we, and then it subsides and it goes away. But I do believe that they can kind of pop in when you need them. I mean, oh, I think that could happen. I've had it happen where I've heard him been wakened but from in the middle of the night or, you know, by a voice and it's my father's yelling my name you know what i mean and so literally i think yes we can hear them sometimes you know and and yes they are i believe he's in heaven but i don't i don't know the rules of heaven so i don't know if they get to come down or not right yeah <laughs> but um, <laughs> i you know i do know that i believe that sometimes i feel like he's that close that i can just talk to him and i you know i don't know if that's me or if it is if it's true so i, do, I think it's true I yeah think. Right. That moment. I mean, I do think of her a lot when I'm on my walks and I'm trying to think of things and like media and stuff because she was so helpful with that. And I'm like, dang it, dang it, Ashley, why? You know, and I go through my stuff again of my anger and then having to remind myself again yeah, that everything right. happened for a reason. And I might not have noticed, but um, I do like have some validity in hey this did happen for this reason for my experience last tuesday right yes yeah. that was pretty and yes that one i i think is really exciting and i i guess right now we'll close this podcast out and because okay. I, mean, I just love do want to hear more about it but i on the next oh sure next well and if you but, haven't been to the present hotel for sure go because oh yeah it changed it changed my life forever and, and that's on your blog isn't it well, so um, Key's oh, sales haven't. book is. I haven't written it yet, and I will. I really will. I mean, it's just hard for me to do, but I will do it, and I'm going to dedicate it to Ashley. Oh, yes, um, definitely. Even Keith, I told him the story, and he was like, oh, God, are you okay? I can't believe this happened to And um, I go back. I'm supposed to be our lead investor, and it's the first weekend in January. Uh huh. And, you know, it's going to be hard for me to be there without her. Yes. We had all these plans, but I'm going to do it for her in, in the honor of her. So you're going to be at the Crescent Hotel in January? I will. It's like the first weekend of January, and it's called ESP Weekend. Ah, and cool. It's on the website. Um, if you go to Crescent, it's the Crescent Hotel. And, and I think it's actually, their website is, is the greatest. It's most haunted, the most haunted hotel in America or something. And they are literally named the most haunted hotel in america <laughs> oh amazing <laughs> so that's their website and i love them the staff is just like they're wonderful and i'm going to stay there and then so we do the crescent moon one night which i'm i'm going to be lead investigator of and then the next night we go to basin hotel which i've never been to mm -hmm. and it's in eureka, eureka springs mm -hmm. arkansas mm -hmm. so it'll be really great that'll be great oh what fun yeah. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you sharing this because I know that that was a very personal experience and I really really appreciate you sharing with me and everyone else that will be listening Thank and I you. and I'm going to say if you enjoyed this podcast to my to our listeners I encourage you to share it with others you think would also be interested and if you have a supernatural encounter to share on real ghost chatter you can contact me at m-a-r-y-a-n-n at m-a-r-y-a-n-n P-O-L-L dot com. If you'd like to know more about me, go to M-A-R-Y-A-N-N-P-O-L-L dot com and or authormasterminds.com forward slash M-A-R-Y dash A-N-N dash P-O-L-L to look and to see some of the most amazing footage and experiences by Rosella. You can go to her blog website, which is H-T-T-P-S two slashes my haunted travel blog all one phrase dot blogspot dot com until next time may the wind always be at your back the sun on your face and the good lord walk beside you <laughs>